We've all experienced grief and loss. Death is a part of life. Imagine if this happened in your family. Beginning in 2011, we lost three family members in 18 months. First, my little sister died in a car accident. She was 26 with a two-year-old son. Just a few months later, Dennis's mom died from congestive heart failure. And shortly after that, we lost my brother when he took his own life. Each death had its own set of complications and reverberations. Each family member was a precious person, and we loved them dearly. We were heart sick, grief stricken, absolutely brought to our knees. We found ourselves in a deep angst, it's really hard to describe, where nothing actually made sense, and it all seemed surreal. We had so many emotions, anger, confusion, deep sadness. Honestly, it was difficult to get out of bed on some days. We would wake up in the morning and remember like it was happening all over again. Our business definitely suffered, but we managed to keep it afloat on many days by volleying between an hour of distress and an hour of getting things done. We would get stuck sometimes, fixated on all that had happened, hesitant to move forward. But you know what? We realized that we had a choice. We could retreat into fear and dysfunction, or we could connect to that calm, still point within where all is well, even when all is not well. And so that's what we did. We connected to the still point over and over again, and we began to step through our grief together. You see, by fully entering the depths of our grief, we were able to eventually transcend the pain. The hole in the heart never goes away. But by fueling ourselves with things that nurtured and nourished us, we galvanized our strength. We drew from the energies of grace and gratitude, and we began to move forward. We did begin to heal, but you know, grief is very stressful, and stress can cause you to lose your way if you're not careful. We've all experienced stress in here, and stress has a potential to hijack you and your dreams. It almost hijacked ours. Did you know that stress is the number one health epidemic in the United States? In the next two seconds, seven people will die of stress. By the time we finish speaking, that'll be 2,900 people. That's 110 million people each year dead from stress. The World Health Organization reminds us that by the year 2020, just a few short years from now, stress, anxiety, and depression will be the number one disability in the world. Mindfulness, or what we call Mindful Mojo, prevents stress from hijacking you. We credit our survival to our spirituality and the psychological practices of Mindful Mojo. It's being in the present moment over and over again, practicing acceptance and non-judgment. It's the realization that the point of power is always in the present moment. You see, stress can take away your power, but Mindful Mojo gives it back to you. Yes, Mindful Mojo. Think of it as a blend of stillness and dynamic energy, of practicing presence and intentionality, which then energizes you. You see, when people think about mindfulness, they tend to think about being all zinned out and in the <laughs> bliss and calm and peaceful and centered. And that is all true and it's all good. But Mindful Mojo also energizes and empowers you. It connects you with your confidence and your resilience, all qualities that we needed to get through this time in our lives. Mindfulness teaches you to be present in everything that you do, whether you're eating or exercising or driving in Atlanta traffic. It moves you from habitual reactionary patterns, think unskillful, to more skillful responding to all of what life brings. You know, it's funny, you never really hear anybody say, I need my life to become more hectic, more <laughs> stressful, right? You get used to stress. That's how you start getting hijacked. So let's talk about for a minute, a little bit about the 
neuroscience of this hijacking I'm speaking of. When you're stressed and overwhelmed, the amygdala, which is the fear center in the brain, becomes hyperactive. It actually hijacks the prefrontal cerebral cortex, which is responsible for judgment and other things, uh, important things like organizing, planning, processing. Also affected is the hippocampus, responsible for learning and memory. So when you're really stressed and overwhelmed, you can't think straight, you don't remember, and you just tend to make bad decisions, right? So today you're going to learn some of what we've learned along the way, specifically how Mindful Mojo can prevent stress from hijacking you. Yeah, so we have dedicated our life's work to helping people diffuse their stress and live more mindfully so that they can go on to live their dreams. In 2006, we founded the Mindfulness Program at Chapman Cancer Wellness Piedmont Healthcare for cancer patients and their families. Now, these patients have a basic dream. They want to live longer, see their children grow up, meet their grandchildren, Getting a cancer diagnosis can be really traumatic. And many of you here today know what we're talking about. How many of you have been impacted by cancer, either personally or through your family? Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is a pervasive disease. It hit our family in 2008 when my 62-year-old father died from cancer. This disease has taken too many lives. And it's our belief that cancer patients really need to learn to diffuse their stress. First, because it prevents that hijacking in the brain so they can make really good healthcare decisions. And second, because high levels of stress are connected to cortisol, which is linked to inflammation and disease. Kelly came to us in the summer of 2007 with stage three breast cancer. She's a young mother. And as you can imagine, completely freaked out and terrified of the treatment she was facing. Well, she came to class, connected with her mindful mojo, and then could navigate chemo and radiation and surgery. She could be there fully, you see, for herself and her children. Today, Kelly is a survivor, or better yet, a thriver. And she credits much of her recovery to learning to live more mindfully. So one of the simple strategies we taught Kelly to get through these difficult treatments is mindful deep belly breathing. And we want to invite you now to join us in this practice. So if you would, get both of your feet flat on the floor, and sitting up nice and tall. Good. And let's inhale through the nose, fill your belly up with air, and then exhale audibly. Ah. Nice, let's do that again. Inhale, and release. Ah, good, and one last time. Ah. Notice how you feel. Very quickly you become calm and centered with just a, three, a few rounds of deep belly breathing. And that's because this practice engages the parasympathetic nervous system, which quickly creates a relaxation response. On the other hand, when you get stressed, you may have a tendency to hold your breath or breathe shallowly into the chest, and that actually creates a stress response. Yeah, breathing mindfully into the belly really does mitigate stress. You see, when the body is relaxed, the mind becomes clear, and when the mind becomes clear, you just tend to make better decisions. So another area we've worked in is in corporations with executives and employees who have big dreams of contributing to their industry. Unfortunately, we've seen how stress can hijack those dreams. Did you know that three out of four employees report that stress is adversely affecting both their personal and professional lives? In fact, it's so serious that one out of 12 has considered suicide. So if you look around the room here today, some of the folks around you may be struggling. It may even be you. And it doesn't have to be that way. The practices of Mindful Mojo really can make a difference. We really do believe that. And so one of the ways that stress manifests is by showing up in the body. 
Some of you are walking around with your shoulders up to your ears, and you don't even realize it because you're so used to it. And you've created a body memory of tension. So here's an example of Mindful Mojo right now. Check in with your body and see where you're holding tension and relax that. And let's systematically begin to relax the body from head to toe. So beginning with your forehead, jaw, and face, your neck and shoulders, relaxing that. Good. Arms and hands, relaxing your upper torso and your lower torso, down through your hips and pelvis, legs and feet. Nice. And do one more sweep from head to toe. Relaxing any last residue of tension. Great. So you see, when you are fully present and relaxed in your body, you are more effective in everything that you do. And this is what we taught Stephen, a young executive in the IT industry. Stephen had a big dream of bringing sustainable water systems to impoverished nations. Wow, such a powerful, noble dream. Well, when he came to us, he had chronic, debilitating GI issues, lots of stress, lots of problems. Stephen reported that he felt very pressured at work, was hardly ever home with his wife and children, and rarely unplugged from technology. When he was home, Stephen was so uptight that the relationships there were strained. Now, Stephen was a good guy, it's just that he wasn't at his best because he was so overwhelmed with stress. Yeah, so the second thing we did to help Stephen is to learn to set realistic boundaries around technology time, which, as you can imagine, was quite difficult because we all love our technology and we need it, right? <laughs> but did you know that the average person is checking their phone between 45 and 75 times per day? I mean, collectively, that's like 80 billion phone checks each day. Dennis, are you taking a selfie right now? I yeah, just want to get a shot on stage. We're in the middle of a TEDx talk. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can you believe that? <laughs> so we are just having a little bit of fun with you today. But seriously, we're all addicted to our screens to some extent, right? You've been in that conversation when somebody whips out their phone, unable to stay fully present with you, and that doesn't feel good. And it's the opposite of Mindful Mojo. Right, not exactly Mindful Mojo. No. See, the uh, biology hasn't caught up with the technology, so you can find yourself overextended and overstimulated with so much information and communication, right? Mm -hmm. What we've learned is it's great to step away, even if it's for a few moments, take a break, stop. Just allow the body and mind to reset. What you'll find is that when you return, you'll be refreshed and restored with more clarity, energy, and creativity. So speaking of energy and creativity, we've worked with a lot of students and their families. Some of them are trapped in chronic negative thinking. They're saying things to themselves like, I don't have what it takes. I'll never make it. I'm so overwhelmed. Does anyone in here ever have a voice like that in your head? Yeah, sure. And we know what that's like. You see, as a teenager, I really struggled with depression. And Dennis struggled with anxiety. Fortunately for us, we learned to meditate as teenagers. And it has served us well ever since. And what we learned then and what we now teach is that you are not your thoughts. They are just thoughts. Think of them as clouds floating by in the sky, and you are the witness of those thoughts, or what we call consciousness. And when you learn to stay connected to consciousness, you step into your authentic power, no longer dependent on externals for your happiness, your peace, and your well-being. Hey, check this out. Angela and I have been up here speaking, so that means that we spoke. And when we were fooling around with the phone, that was a joke. The sound that a frog makes is a croak, and the white of an egg is a... <laughs> did you say yolk, or did you think it? Sound like a lot of saying of it. You see, it's a tricky thing. The mind is easily seduced into patterns and can be quickly hypnotized. So I want you to think about something. If you can be fooled by your thoughts, like right now when you're not stressed, 
Imagine how much you can be tricked by your thoughts when you really are stressed. So it's really important that you don't believe everything you think initially. Right, so don't let your thoughts think you. We have a saying in integrative medicine that neurons that fire together wire together, meaning that every time you're thinking something negative, you're creating a wiring in your brain that makes it physiologically easier to think negatively the next time. The good news is, is that every time you're successful in replacing that thought with something more positive, you're also creating a wiring in your brain that makes it more likely that you'll be able to think positively the next time. So take charge of your internal dialogue. Instead of, I can't handle this, change it to, I got this. Taking these small stress relieving steps can have a profound impact in your life if you do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It has fundamentally changed our lives and our way of being in the world. And we really believe it can do the same for you. We're passionate about that. Mm -hmm. And that is our hope. So we'll leave you with this. Knowing about these concepts and practicing them daily are two very different things. So from a place of self-honor and self-compassion, connect with your mindful mojo through your breath and body, your thoughts, and taking those technology breaks. So as we close, why don't we end on one mindful breath together. So inhaling through the nose, filling up your belly. Exhale audibly. Ah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>